Hello and welcome to Spotlight, where we turn the attention on particular products and services across our Middle East, Africa and South Asia region. Today, we're going to focus on the key defence requirement of early warnings against aerial threats. And to talk about this, we're joined by John Norman, retired US Major General, who is the Air Force Chief of Staff for Southern Command, but is today Vice President of Requirements and Capabilities for Air Power at Raytheon Missiles and Defence, a business of Raytheon Technologies. And they, of course, are the manufacturer of early warning radar. John, welcome to the program. Now, can you start by telling us just why early warning radar is so vital to a nation's defences? Well, Alan, I, I really appreciate that, and thank you for the time today. Um, as, as you look at the defense of, of any nation, the, the, the critical element of that is having an understanding of the domain around you. Um, I, I think that we can all appreciate that in today's world, a threat can come from any, any direction. And so having, having a persistent coverage that's always on and has an extremely long range that, that protects both against air threats and threats that come from the uh, lower orbit, a uh, ballistic missile, for instance, and can cover those in, in a raid fashion. So multi-targets coming in all at once while deconflicting from commercial aircraft or civilian aircraft that are flying in that same airspace. And for that, that portion that's in the uh, low Earth orbit, deconflict from what would be mischaracterized as potentially a threat when it's actually a satellite. Uh, so that that's where I think that this early warning radar that we've spent a lot of time developing and we've fielded with the with the United States and it's been in service for 25 years and has recently been fielded in, in Qatar, it, it provides a unique capability to, to the defense of a country like the uh, UAE. Yeah, I, and I, I'll tell you, as a former Air Force guy, the thing I really like about this that, that persistent long range visibility, that domain awareness that it provides uh, for all the aircraft that are flying. You know, if, if you look at some of the commercial airline maps, you'll see thousands of aircraft at any given time and trying to discriminate between them uh, to understand if there's something that's, that's operating off plan or something that, that could be a potential threat. Uh, this radar gives that to you. You know, it, it preserves forces because I don't have to have aircraft on a combat air patrol. I can have them on alert on the ground. So I'm not wasting hours on that aircraft or, or the pilot's time. And I can launch them against something that I, I am able to detect and track with this early warning radar uh, to investigate if I need to. Okay, you mentioned Qatar, and we all know the threat that's happening within, within this region for the moment. And what is it then that sets your early warning radar apart from the other sensors that are on the market? So there's, there's a lot of competition in the early warning market. Uh, I believe our design uh, gives us a significant edge. You know, I talked about being deployed with the United States uh, for the past 25 years. During that time, it allowed us to to insert new technology. We have a transmitter receiver that we've replaced and it's in the Qatar one that it, it's a gallium nitride based, so GAN based. And what that allows us to do with this radar and it operates in the, in the UHF band is that we can, we can run that at a lower power setting and have the same sensitivity or we can increase the power and get further range and, and better sensitivity with it. It's more reliable. What the early warning radar does is it, it provides that persistent coverage at all times. So that one radar, that, that fire control radar that you may have on, you can slew it to the direction that target's coming from, and now it's, it's detected and it's covered. If there's a problem with one of these, these transmitter receiver modules, uh, it has built-in redundancy. And so even with the radar operating, the, the main maintenance from inside of the facility can go in and replace that transmitter receiver module and it never loses coverage. Um, all the radars operating in those other bands, they become very, very noisy. And so it's, I, I think the best analogy is, you know, put yourself in a crowded room where everybody's talking with the same, same voice. It's very difficult to hear a single conversation because all the voices kind of merge with each other. I think the same thing applies when you look at a radar environment. So if 
most of the radars are operating in that higher frequency, it becomes a very, very noisy environment. And so you spend a lot of time with processing to try and dig out the specific target. And our, our radar has a unique capability with the way it operates in that UHF band that we don't have that same limitation. Okay, John, you, you say you know that you, this system is unique, but we talked a lot about integration, integrated defense these days. And of course, we have within the Gulf area a lot of allies now working together amongst the forces particularly. That they, with the US, you've got others working there. How do you integrate this with other solutions? Oh, well, that's, that's a great question. And it's, that, that is first in the design of, of our um, command and control system. You know, we need this to be integrated completely with these fire control radars because, again, it's an early warning radar. It's not providing that, that precise discriminating radar that you need to guide a missile up to intercept the target, whether it's an air target or a ballistic missile. So by design, this is fully integrated at, at the high side in the U.S. with our THAAD radars and our, our THAAD systems with Patriot and with Aegis. So it not only provides the feed to them, but it takes their feeds and makes sure it, it allows us to have a, a single operating picture, a combined operating picture, fully integrated. Okay, but I've got that, but you're talking about this having been in use by the US for 25 years. Things have moved on. We talked in the Middle East about the threat of kamikaze drones and so on. How do you at Raytheon intend to stay ahead of these evolving threats and make use of this early warning radar capability? Yeah, so that's, that's a, it's a great point. So when you look at the way that a fire control radar is, is operated and the way that they function, so as it's tracking a specific threat, especially closer in, so these kamikaze drones and the, the, the UAS systems, um, they're, they're typically much shorter range where they become a threat. And so the fire control radars, they have to put all their energy down onto that target. They may be able to, to target some of them, um, you know, think of 15, 20 different targets, but then their capacity to take on anything else is eliminated. Um, when you when you look at some of the raids that occurred currently, so last January 24th and 31st, they were time coordinated, they were multi-axis and, and beyond. And so what an early warning radar would have provided in that instance is it would have given coverage. So while those fire control radars are, are focused on a specific axis of those threats coming in, it's providing 360 degree coverage in every other direction while those fire control radars are focused on those threats. It would have detected the other ones as they come in so that we can reallocate a fire control radar. And really that's the beauty of an integrated air and missile defense. Well, it certainly sounds like something we need and will help us sleep a bit easier at nights. John Norman from Raytheon's Missiles and Defense, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.